In order to make a pinpoint landing, Apollo 12 had to launch within a very narrow window or time frame. The weather was overcast and threatening, which was not seen as a problem. Commercial airliners flew through storm clouds all the time. Despite the overcast weather, the launch went well. The Saturn pierced the thick cloud cover. Then at 36 seconds into the flight, Mother Nature herself weighed in. Apollo 12 had been struck by lightning twice. The impact on the spacecraft was both instantaneous and catastrophic. I don't know what happened here. We had out. I'm not sure if you hit by lightning. Fuel cell lights and AC bus light, fuel cell disconnect, AC bus overload, one and two, main bus A and fade out. Everything that could have gone out in that spacecraft went out. I mean, the electrical system, uh, the guidance system, uh, you know, the spacecraft was basically non functional even as the Saturn V was pushing it towards orbit. As the crippled spacecraft continued its climb, Pete Conrad grasped the abort handle and hung on tight. Twisting it would end the flight. Mission rules suggest he should have done so immediately, blasting the command module away from the blazing rocket. Instead, Conrad waited as Apollo 12 traveled higher and faster. The crew flew in near darkness, illuminated only by the flashing alarm lights. Meanwhile, Mission Control tried to figure out what had gone wrong. The charge had crashed all shipboard systems, which needed to be reset immediately. Flight controllers began to think that nothing less than a total reboot would repair the system crash. No one had trained for such a possibility. The instructions were radioed to the spacecraft. Only Alan Bean understood the order. Apollo Houston, try SCE to auxiliary, over. SCE to auxiliary. SCE, SCE to auxiliary. As his crewmates debated, he acted. A quiet flip of a switch, and Apollo 12 was back up and running. To everybody's surprise, Apollo 12 was still intact. After a quick check around the room, it fell to rookie flight director Jerry Griffin to decide whether the mission would continue. Poor Jerry Griffin. It was his first mission as flight director, and he's had this happen to him during the launch. Now he's presiding over this checkout period, and he's wondering, you know, can we go ahead with this mission? And, you know, obviously feels a great weight of responsibility. I mean, this is an enormous burden for a flight director to have to carry. And uh, at, at the moment when he was sitting there feeling the tension and really sweating this out, Chris Kraft came over and put his hand on his shoulder and said, you know, young man, we don't have to go to the moon today. The surge uh, knocked all three fuel cell electrical power plants offline, and we put the f fuel cells back on one at a time, click, 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 everything back, it's OK, let's go to the moon. And that's exactly what happened here. It was, uh, it was a good day. As the third stage pushed them into low Earth orbit, Pete Conrad finally took his hand off the abort handle. Once he was certain the emergency was behind them, he set to work re-establishing the lighthearted tone of the mission. The first thing we did after we got in orbit, he leans over, pulls out of a bag there, three hats that say Apollo 12 on it, and we put them on, and his has a propeller on it. Apollo 12 had survived the most dangerous launch in the program's history. The only question remaining was, were they still go for the moon? <laughs> <laughs>